Hey, I'm Josh Fisher. I'm a climate scientist at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, or JPL. I focus on the land side of things in the climate system, that is, ecosystems, forests, vegetation. But I also collaborate a lot with atmosphere, ocean, and ice people as we try to figure out the whole integrated climate system. Of course, when working with these guys, we argue over whose climate component is most important. The ocean guys are like, man, the ocean is way bigger than land, and major weather events come from us. And I'm like, the land is where we're at. And they're all, with sea level rise, there ain't going to be much more of you left. And I'm like, step off. And then the atmosphere guys come in all snobbish and say, now settle down, you two. Clearly the atmosphere sees and controls everything. And we're all, you're ugly. No, seriously, this is what CO2 looks like. And this is what land and ocean look like. Boom. And I'm all like, even your most important picture, the 50 years of atmospheric CO2 rise over Mauna Loa, is only beautiful to nerds like us who appreciate the up and down breathing of the biosphere, <coughs> land and ocean, and subtle changes in the rise due to increases or decreases in the global economy and fossil fuel burning. Plus, your picture was created for measurements on land, Hawaii no less. And they're like, you're keeling me. And we all laugh and give, give awkward high fives in the way nerds do because it's a reference to Dave Keeling who made the Mount Aloha CO2 measurements. Anyway, what else? I'm from Los Angeles. Actually, I grew up in LA with my mom, but I visited my dad in Alaska. We lived there most of my childhood during summer and winter vacations. I think it was this flying back and forth between these two environmental extremes, staring out the window for hours on end at the changing world below that got me interested in remote sensing of environmental science. Wondering why I could bike all night in the endless sun of the Alaskan summer, but if I ran around the track in LA a few times, I could barely breathe. Why we were installing high flow shower heads in Alaska, but low flow shower heads in LA. And why was water supply so unpredictable? I was an unremarkable student in high school, pretty good grades, I guess, not stellar. The SAT scores, just enough to barely get into UC Berkeley for college. I bummed around for the first year of college, taking random classes to figure out what was out there in the world. And finally I decided that I liked science as it was challenging and useful, but I couldn't decide on which science, biology, chemistry, physics, and so on. So I found some options that combine multiple sciences, pre-med, uh, biochem, environmental sciences. I thought environmental sciences would be a good way to get out of the office now and then, so I went with it. For my senior thesis project, I had to think about what it was I liked about environmental science, and I needed to narrow a topic down. I decided that I didn't really want to study a specific species or area, but I liked bigger picture stuff, inter interconnectivity. I ended up finding an ecosystem modeling lab um, on campus, and my project started off focusing on predicting how much water California would have any given year but ended up narrowing down even more um, on one particular component of the hydrological cycle, evapotranspiration, which is how much water returns to the atmosphere via evaporation or transpiration from plants. And it's the one component of the water cycle that you can't really measure so easily. I ended up really liking scientific research, so I decided to go to grad school to keep doing it and pick up more skills and tools like satellite remote sensing. I stayed on at Berkeley I was there for a total of nine years, undergrad and grad, so go Bears. Yeah, Cal through and through, from the 1-10 in 10 football season under Holmo to the seven consecutive bowl games starting just two years later under Tedford. I was always a big Cal football and basketball fan. I still go to see, go see Cal when they come down to L.A. to play UCLA and USC in both football and basketball. I play a lot of basketball, too. Played for my high school team, still do. Well, not for my high school, but I play basketball in general. Um, what else about me? I've been snowboarding for almost 20 years now. I like to dance, club dance, swing dance, break dance. I actually took a break dancing class at Cal my last year of grad school. You know, you can't really uh, get a PhD until you finish your break dance requirement. Now I do something called acro yoga, which is pretty cool. Uh, you can see me doing it in JPL's talent show on YouTube if you look it up. Anyway, after nearly a decade at Cal and growing up mainly in California, I decided that if I really wanted to work on global issues, I needed to work globally and get out of the Californian U.S. bubble. 
So I went to work in England for almost four years at Oxford University. The goal was to add nutrient cycling to my repertoire, which up until then had focused primarily on water and carbon. Actually, the real goal was to pick up a British accent, but sadly this didn't happen. The best I can do is water, partly because Oxford is so international that I wasn't really completely surrounded by Brits, and partly because soon after I got there, we got a big project to do a giant field campaign throughout the Amazon and Andes. So I ended up working in the rainforest and cloud forest of Peru for a good chunk of my time I was employed by the UK. The field work was amazing. Uh, so many stories. Maybe I'll save them for another blog if people care. Anyway, the intent was just to be in England for a couple of years, then return to the US, but the economy crashed and all the jobs, jobs back home dried up. So I found myself stuck on a small island in the North Atlantic for all eternity, which actually wasn't too bad. I really liked it there, plus the proximity to Europe in general. If you felt like, hey, let's get Italian food for dinner, you could just go to Italy. But I was getting older and began thinking about starting a family with my girlfriend, who I was at with Cal, and who had come over to England with me. And we were like, if we have a kid here, he would call you mummy. And that would be super cute. But we really love L.A., and she's from L.A. too, and hoped that we could return home someday. And sure enough, she got a job interview and then an offer from Occidental College, and there just happened to be a position at JPL, which is 15 minutes away from Occidental, that was written for exactly what I do. And I got the JPL job soon thereafter, and we were able to move back, and now we have a one-and-a-half-year-old who's super cute. Oh, and I made a rap video of him on YouTube called I'm Wet in Diaper, and it's, it's a remix of Chris Brown and Buster Rhymes and Getting Paper. Look it up. He's super cute. Anyway, I'll uh, end this blog post here. Have, hopefully you got to know me a little and see where I come from as a NASA scientist. And I'm going to get back to trying to save the planet and making baby rap videos.